Hey everybody, how's it going? So, a lot of people have linked me to a particular article, some in good faith, some in bad, about insurance, and I thought that we would all use this opportunity to discuss it together. This article says small businesses win COVID insurance payouts after UK Supreme Court victory. FCA said it would work with insurers to make sure they move quickly to pay claims of more than $1 billion. And it talks about the business owners that will get paid. It says hundreds of thousands of small businesses that were forced to close during the pandemic are expected to receive payouts on insurance claims worth more than $1 billion, and what is described as a historic victory at the Supreme Court. Now, just to give you a little bit of a backstory for those of you who don't want a business or don't quite understand what's going on here, there is this thing called business interruption insurance. The way business interruption insurance works is if you're a business owner, you pay for business interruption insurance, and if something occurs that were to interrupt your business and keep you from being able to conduct business, the whole idea is that they're going to pay you out a percentage of the money that you would have expected to have taken in during that time. And the problem with this is that it is insurance. So the way insurance works is you're going to pay to be insured against something in the future. So if you get a heart attack in the future, you are paying your premiums the whole way, they pay for your open heart surgery. Or if you have, a, you know, you have insurance on your house, something terrible happens to your house, uh, a tornado comes through or something and you have tornado insurance, they are going to pay for the repairs to the house to get it back to where it was. And the problem with insurance is that the company that stands to lose money from providing you the service you paid for is the company that gets to choose whether or not they are going to provide the service that you paid for. But it's not one of those transactions where you give the money and then you get the service immediately. It's not like you go to a store and you buy something and you're handing the cash as they're handing you the item kind of thing. It is something where you pay now and you trust them to later on provide you with the service. And one of the things that we're finding in many aspects of modern society is that we are not quite the high trust society that many credit us as being because you can very easily pay for these types of insurance and then get fucked. So what's been occurring to, with a lot of business owners is they paid for this insurance, they've been paying for 5 or 10 or 20 years, and then COVID comes out, and they're not allowed to open their business, they're unable to open their business, their business is interrupted, so they file a claim, and the insurance company says, oh, we're not covering this. Now, a lot of people have, you know, tried to pretend and put on their fake-ass bow tie and pretend, oh, you must have just not read the fine print. You are not a proper business owner. If you were a proper business owner, you would button the top button in your polo shirt, and you would read your contracts and understand them more properly, good the problem with the people that do this bullshit little bow tie thing is that they don't understand that there are businesses that actually paid for pandemic insurance. And the pandemic insurance was not paying out against the pandemic. This is a scam that has been going on for a really long time. And it's only now that people are starting to finally open their eyes to it and realize that insurance in most cases is a scam. I had business interruption insurance back in 2012. I paid for the entire year and then there was a hurricane. What happened after the hurricane was that we had no electricity. We are an electronics repair store. Electricity is fundamental to the business. So not having electricity means no electronics repair, no ability to do electronics repair. And this happened because the power plant stopped providing us with electricity. Now, the power plant stopped providing us with electricity because of water ingress. They were flooded. So my insurance company, the Hartford, said, we don't cover flooding. This is not flood insurance. And I told them, no water got in my store. Like, th th there's no water in here. What are you talking about? That's ridiculous. And they said, no, no, you don't understand. It's not about the water not getting into your store. You don't have electricity. But the reason you have no electricity is due to water, and this insurance doesn't cover water, so, you know gargle my balls. That, that's me paraphrasing. Uh, and this, this, this is a problem. And one of the things that I've been getting a lot of shit for ever since this news article came out, a lot of people have been saying, Lewis, see, you're wrong. You said that people can't go to court and get what they paid for with insurance. You're wrong. If your insurance doesn't cover you, you go to court. And if you win, then you'll get what you paid for. And there's a couple of problems with that thought process. I just want to point them out as a business owner. Let me just unbutton this because this is fucking annoying. <laughs> the first is that, A, most people that go to court for these cases wind up losing 
because there's when this happens, it's usually not an event that occurs to just about every single business in the area. A lot of times, business interruption insurance may just affect one business, where there's not going to be this this outcry from hundreds of thousands of people, where they are all to the point of taking their pitchforks to the insurance company or the state government, unless someone pays up what they're supposed to. So if you go to court at the time that your business is interrupted, you're going to need money. And the problem is that your money is going to be drained out because you don't have a business. So now you don't have any money to spend on an attorney for the court case. Now you need to find another job or you need to find, maybe if you had a heart attack and they're not covering it, you need to recover. If your house got destroyed, now you need to find a place to live. You're probably not in the best financial or mental place in life to be able to win a long drawn out court case against a multi-billion dollar insurance company that has top tier lawyers who, let's face it, probably hired lobbyists to have the laws written specifically to cater to them. Secondly, and most importantly, why this case, to my opinion, still doesn't necessarily matter or categorizes a win is it's been it's been almost 10 months. It's been 10 months. Like, what does this matter now? Okay, so you're going to pay out in January or February or March. This the, the, These shutdowns happened in March or April of last year. You're a year too late. Do you think my vendors are going to wait around a year for me to pay a bill? Are my employees going to keep coming to work? Are they going to be loyal to me for a full year? So let's say I have specialized staff members, and these are people that would take two or three years to train from the very beginning, from the ground up if I wanted to get them the way they are now, and I'm not able to pay them for a full year. They're probably going to go on and find a job somewhere else. And if they do find that job somewhere else, I'm not going to win them back just because I say, hey, by the way, I got your salary back. Like That's not the way that this works. Once people switch, it's very difficult to get them to switch back. So your, your, your landlord probably has already kicked you out of the space by then or tried to get you evicted. Your employees have likely already left. Your vendors have likely moved on. Your partners and the people that work with you are probably already said you are not able to pay up on the invoices that we've issued you for what we've given you, so we're just not doing business with you anymore. By the time that the business interruption insurance pays out, by the time the court finally rules in your favor, all of your bridges at that point have probably been burned. So now you have this little payout, but you don't have a business and you don't have an income. And this is one of the reasons that I find insurance to be a scam. If it is accepted procedure that in order to get a service you pay for, you need to go to court, the service that that business is providing you is either not being provided or the business providing you that service is a scam. You should not have to go to court to get this to get what, you, what it is that you paid for. And this drives me nuts in comments when people say, insurance is not a scam. If they don't pay out, you just go to court. It's common. It happens all the time. Even Apple is not this bad. Think about it. Imagine if you went to an Apple store and you swiped your credit card for a MacBook and they just didn't give you the MacBook until you took them to court. Like, we don't accept this in any other area of our life. But for some reason, we accept it when it comes to insurance. And we just roll over and deal with it. And one of the reasons many roll over and deal with it is because many lease contracts, mortgage contracts, business contracts will require that you have insurance. And when it is required that you purchase insurance, when they know that everybody in the country has to buy it, whether or not they like it, it makes it easy for the small number of companies providing insurance to make the terms absolutely awful and often to act corrupt until the point that there are pitchforks at the door, which I believe, I'm honestly, I'm surprised that there were not more pitchforks at the door, given the way that these insurance companies have treated people all across the spectrum like shit throughout the pandemic. And I will include links down below to those who don't believe me. They There are insurance companies that literally provide pandemic insurance that did not pay out over COVID-19, which was an internationally known pandemic that's been killing hundreds of thousands of people. It's just absolutely insane. But it is what it is. And one of the things that I'm hoping is that with all the changes that are occurring as a result of COVID, in the post-COVID world, I'm really hoping that people, you know, as we're rethinking a lot of these structures, as we're rethinking, uh, you know, how work is done, as we're rethinking where people live and the decisions they make with their life, I'm really hoping that there is a rethinking of insurance based on how they just shoved the knife in and twisted it as hundreds of thousands of people across the country went out of business. And you can see what they were saying here as their excuse. One of them is, this is not a disease which anyone could have specifically had in mind when the policies were issued, written, and marked. Fuck you. If you're not able to provide 
what it is that you've been taking money for, for hundreds of years, then go the fuck out of business like anybody else. You know, if it, it, it's incredibly, if I, if I buy a chip from a vendor and I've been using that chip for the last five years in my motherboard repairs, and then tomorrow I find out that that vendor has been selling me chips that just are all eventually going to die because they're knockoff fake crap. And all of those customers wind up at my door. Oh, I didn't, I didn't expect it. Oh, no. Nobody's going to care. Department of Consumer Affairs is going to come in and fuck me in the ass as a result of it. And frankly, in that case, they should because I screwed over all these people. If you're not able to provide the service, then don't charge for it. You decided to create pandemic insurance. You decided to then take money from people for this. If you offer a service at a price below the cost required for you to provide that service, and then when people actually expect the service, you're not able to pay out, that sounds like a you problem. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. And my heart goes out to everybody who was scammed by these insurance companies listed in the article.